Joining us on the line is Dr. William Luther, Assistant Professor of Economics at Florida Atlantic University. He's director of the American Institute for Economic Research's Sound Money Project and an adjunct scholar with the Cato Institute's Center for Monetary and Financial Alternatives. Dr. Luther, thanks so much for joining the show. Really appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. So let's talk for a second about Bitcoin. So right now, the economy is in a serious state of flux. The stock market is bouncing around like a yo-yo, but it generally seems to be that people are holding off on the sidelines. They're taking their money out of things and they're just holding it in cash because they really don't know what safe assets look like. This has been apparently an amazing opportunity for William, for, for Warren Buffett to start ripping on Bitcoin. You've started to see a lot of people who are opponents of Bitcoin suddenly talking about the evils of Bitcoin because, of course, there are a lot of Bitcoins. Some are much more volatile than others. So what do you make of Warren Buffett going after Bitcoin and some of the sort of old school investment class talking about how Bitcoin is the great root of all evil? Well, you know, first, uh, all due respect to the Oracle of Omaha, um, uh, but he is a value investor. What do value investors do? They look at the cash flows of, of companies. Uh, Bitcoin's not a company, doesn't have any cash flows. And so you can't really use that model to consider the value of Bitcoin. It's a currency. Its value is ultimately determined by its usefulness to make transactions. And so he's really coming at this question from uh, the wrong perspective, uh, a perspective that's just not very useful for considering this asset class. So again, all due respect uh, to, to Warren Buffett, he, he knows what he's, what he's talking about when, when he's evaluating you know, traditional companies, but uh, not so great when, it, when, when looking at currencies here. So Dr. Luther, one of the things that's very weird about what's happening right now is that Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, is down pretty significantly uh, over the course of the last several months. It was up in, in March, it was still up around 35,000. Today, it's down around 32,000. Uh, you've started to see the bubble bursting a little bit when it comes to real estate. You would think that when the Dow Jones Industrial Average goes down, that you might be able to see a pickup with regard to, for example, Bitcoin, people diversifying away from stocks and into things like Bitcoin. Instead, mm -hmm. you're seeing people kind of pulling money out completely because of the rise in interest rates. What do you make of where we are economically right now? Well, again, it's important to keep in mind that, that Bitcoin's primary use case is as a medium of exchange. And as uh, incomes fall... Uh, we don't need as, uh, as as many or as much of the medium of uh, media of exchange that we use um, as we did previously, and so the value of those assets uh, are going to uh, tend to to come down. So right now, there are a lot of questions about where people should be putting their money, and and again, it seems as though we're about to head into a cycle here where a lot of people are going to be just sort of waiting on the sidelines. Is that what you expect? What do you expect to happen in the next few months? There's been a lot of talk about the possibility of recession, and it seems like sometime in the next year and a half, that's almost inevitable. The question is when. Well, I think in terms of you know trying to time the market, uh, um, uh, most specialists aren't very good at that, um, and and retail investors are are even worse. And so the the best thing that you can do is just have a a, a strategy, um, a, a long term strategy that that you adhere to. So. Uh, modern portfolio theory tells us that if you buy the whole market, um, a, a diversified portfolio um, uh, uh, that that has a little bit of exposure to everything, then over the long run, as we experience economic growth, your portfolio is going to perform. Uh, uh, you're going to get uh, average returns, and uh, it's it's really difficult to beat the market. It's um, tough to say we should be satisfied with average, but it turns out in financial markets, average is pretty good. Uh, a lot of hedge funds do worse than average, right? Um, and so, uh, getting that average return is is really the best folks could could hope for. And not trying to time the market is a, a, an important step in in getting those average returns. William Luther, Assistant Professor of Economics at Florida Atlantic University. So, Professor Luther, one of the things that, that everybody is worried about, of course, right now is the inflation rate. The Federal Reserve is talking about increasing the interest rates. It seems to me like they're doing this kind of tentatively, that despite all their talk about being aggressive and tamping down the interest in tamping down the uh, the inflation rate, uh, that, that they're going up half a point at a time, quarter point at a time sometimes. It seems like they're being extremely tentative about this. I really do wonder if they're going to be able to take the, the sting out of inflation if they continue to play around the margins like this, considering that the overall interest rates right now continue to be incredibly low, historically speaking. Well, that's right, Ben. You know, here at AIER, we we pay close attention to to Powell's statements, 
And uh, what we were saying last fall is that he was uh, holding on to this, this transitory language for far too long. Uh, he didn't abandon that until November 30th. The Fed didn't adjust its uh, strategy when it met in December. Um, it didn't revise its course of action despite very uh, optimistic projections that had been shown to be wrong when it met in March. And it's only in May that it really starts to, to, to tighten. And so, you know, from, from my perspective, the Fed has, has been too little too late in terms of getting inflation uh, uh, under control. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, I just, I don't have a lot of optimism that they're going to bring down inflation uh, very quickly um, and, uh, uh, um, and that they're going to do so sufficiently. I think that prices are going to remain permanently elevated well into the future. I mean, and if that happens, then it seems like the, the real mid to long term threat is not inflation, it's economic stagnation, because the, the prices are up. Joe Biden is pushing regulations. He's pushing higher taxes. People are very tentative about investing not only in the markets, but just generally in their own businesses right now, because they don't know which direction the, the economy is going. I mean, even Joe Biden's very sort of optimistic and sunny projections, what Build Back Better would do, suggested that a couple of years out from Build Back Better, we'd be clocking in at like a 1.5, 1.7% GDP growth rate on an annualized basis. Do you, know, do you think that that is the way that the American economy is going to move from now on, considering the structural deficits that we have we have now embedded in our programs? Well, I think that there are still some some strong fundamentals that support economic growth in in the U.S. Um, and and if we have uh, you know a, a higher rate of inflation moving forward, um, it's it's unlikely to be so high that it imposes significant costs on, uh, on, on businesses. We're going to have to recontract a little more frequently. Um, uh, Long-term contracting will be a little bit more risky, but uh, uh, overall we'll, we'll be more or less as productive as we otherwise would be. The, the problem is really in the transition period. Uh, it takes some time for, for market participants to revise their expectations, to renegotiate their contracts. And, and during that time, uh, they, can, they can be fooled into overproducing or underproducing. Um, we would like to avoid that. Uh, uh, and, and sound monetary policy would, would help us avoid that. Uh, unfortunately, the Fed's just uh, uh, not delivering sound monetary policy. Well, that's Professor William Luther of Florida Atlantic University. He's director of the American Institute for Economic Research's Sound Money Project and adjunct scholar with the Cato Institute Center for Monetary and Financial Alternatives. Professor, really appreciate the time and insight. Thank you.